Okay, I'm back. Um, the ice pack, I really hope it's just, it just stays there because it's still too warm. Yeah, look, the death of a, a, of a Christian is, is something wonderful to God because this world is a striving. It's written in God's word that we need to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling that we must strive to enter into the narrow gate, that straight gate, that last day to enter heaven because many on the last day will try to enter in but not be able. It is a striving. Many are the afflictions of the saints, of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us from them all. This world hates disciples. So to make it all the way to the end without dropping the ball, to be among the people bearing fruit in the parable of the sower, 30 fold over, 100 fold over and 60 fold over is a striving, right? And when you get to the end, having trudged through earth, striving to maintain yourself in Christ, to basically hold fast to the pearl of great price, when you finally perish, God says, well done. It is a race like the Comrades Marathon. Everybody that finishes it, even if they finish last, is worthy of being congratulated because it's a treasury. It is a striving. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when then you finally get, uh, bring a saint to the end of themselves and they've held on to Jesus at the very end of that uh, life, even though they were disillusioned, discouraged. Their hope deferred, their hearts therefore being sick. When you finally literally cause a saint to cough out bl blood and breathe their last, that has been trudging through sorrow, a deep tunnel for a decade. When she finally dies, in heaven, it is congratulated, that saint. They, that they are congratulated, those saints, for enduring all of those feats. But woe to you who made it impossible for a child of God to live. It's written in God's word that if it is possible, strive to live at peace with everybody. When they tried to evangelize you that you might award them some kind of ground on which to walk, and you ascertained that they are, they are perpetually just precipitously close to death, like nothing can ever give, until Lomund Lona Shem, unfortunately ends up perishing is the end of you when you succeed to kill the whole body of christ or however many saints might have been giving you a run for your money in the occult that is the beginning of the end of every last one of those occult practitioners whichever cult succeeds to bring low the most prolific saint in their region if you succeed to kill my brother or my sister or even me you're done for is the beginning of the end for you. You have been spoken to in parables but did not understand them because you had no ear to hear, neither did you have an eye to see. You thoroughly imagined that you could eliminate a person who has got the words of life on their tongue. And it just end over there. All that you cause on that day when there's only one person actually prophesying the truth on a mountaintop and you kill them, you cause Amos 8 and 11, a famine. It is written in God's word in Amos 8 and 11 that the day is coming when the Lord is going to send out a fair man on the land not a fair man for food nor that of a thirst of water but of hearing the words of the Lord. So you make it impossible for people to hear God's word because you have literally killed all the prophets of God. You have made Elijah flee into the wilderness and try and ask God to kill him. The Lord then comforts Elijah that there are 7,000 others prophets that is that have not knelt to Baal. They exist even though Jezebel might be killing a whole chunk of them. But when you so violently ethnic cleanse or religion cleanse, when you so terribly cleanse faithful servants of God out of the land to a point where one of them that now is being made to flee into the wilderness will actually ask God to kill them because of the fact that there's no, I mean really there, there's no way for them to land their feet there's no pillow on which to put their head at night they, they literally they, nobody they, they, the world so despises them the glory of the cross is so hated in that region that this person feels in Gatipa alone and since it's written in God's word that it is not good for man to be alone therefore he made Eve a helper suitable for Adam when you then isolate a Christian you essentially make them suicidal you make them want to die you make them just like what Elijah was out just seeking the Lord's face to end his life the Lord had to comfort him by letting him know that you're not alone because being alone is the very be-all and end-all of lethality in these streets. It is very excruciatingly fatal when you leave a person to be comprehensively alone. But the occult knows that, don't they? Because they belong to their daddy, the devil. They're perpetually scheming with haughty machinations to isolate saints of the living God that they might eliminate our basically fever to live. That which is a desire to continue to proliferate your going concern, that which is a desire to continue to push the thing that you are in these streets. 
you will not want to do it anymore because what is the point if there's nobody else there on the left and on the right of you with whom to do it loneliness is fatal and i keep on saying that time and time again it is so fatal that satan is just besotted with doing it to saints look at what he did to micaiah after he prophesied over ahab and jehoshaphat he was thrown into prison and made to eat meager portions of bread and water loneliness and isolation and ostracization from those that you love has always been a satanic strategy look at how joseph's brothers did that even though the dude was encircled in egypt by a whole bunch of egyptians he knew not any of his own countrymen it was not familiar it was a foreign land that was out just spitting him out like he is bones of chicken after chewing them loneliness can kill and when you take a person and you put them in a world that has no regard for them you are ultimately saying die dirty rat die but saints have been so incredibly strong they have walked in so much fortitude in the midst of this loneliness so satan of course being who it is that he is and always has been hey the father of lies and a constant schemer and plotter he then goes really below the belt but we are not unaware of the devil's schemes now are we it's written in God's word in 1 Peter 5 verse 8 that the adversary the devil prances around like a roaring lion seeking whomever he may devour. So we must always be sober, be vigilant. The end of all things is at hand, 1 Peter 5, 7. Therefore, for the sake of your prayers, be sober. The Lord also says that do not, we are not unaware of the devil's schemes. His plots and his schemes are the exact same. So why do you repeat that time and time again? Because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's why history keeps repeating itself because mankind keeps on making the same mistakes because mankind is under the God of this world who has blinded the minds of unbelievers. You toast and you cheer and you ascertain that saints cannot breathe and live in your land until upon extracting every lost one of us from the room you are out your dwelling in a famine in the land where there is no no food no no third what is the way there is no word or hearing of the words of the lord you've got plenty water you have got plenty grain you've got plenty uh flour but you ain't got no spirit you ain't got no god and since those who worship him worship him in spirit and in truth when then you extract as many saints from the earth as you possibly can you ascertain that th those who remain are lonely and when then you make us lonely you create a fatality right you create a near fatality you create um basically the ecosystemic conditions necessary to go out here and reap enoch hey to out here reap elijah when you make christians few and far between sparsely scattered scantily in these streets are they able to find one another you make the earth too lonely for us to basically be okay it's not good for men to be alone, therefore God will make a helper suitable for him, so the Lord will by the helper catch us, magnetize us into the sky. He will reap the body of Christ. He will take us away. If at all you're going to insist on isolating us and ostracizing us, he will take the restrainer away. You don't want him. You cannot insist on maintaining Christians in loneliness. Do you understand what I'm saying? And expect that the Lord is not going to end the world because loneliness is fatal, it's lethal, and it is not God's big general idea for the human race. He made Eve for Adam. And when you keep on ripping Eve out of Adam's hands and vice versa, comprehend this, that the Lord will give you the world that you have created where you all keep on combining with one another, where you keep on, uh, you know, swaying left and right in your bodies with each other yeah um however have no god but you are naive to imagine that a, go that a godless world is a sustainable world a dystopian nightmare is a sustainable world i'm sorry the lord made this earth for his own glory he created all of you to worship him and if you don't want to worship him you must go you're the one that are going to get swept out so the lord is going to reap his bride but before he reaps his bride every so often you will create an excruciating loneliness for saints that cannot wait for that day they cannot wait for that day because you have ascertained that they live in so much loneliness that they cannot wait for the lord to essentially do that which would be the whole slow to anger thing, abounding in steadfast love thing, not willing that anybody should perish thing, but that all should come to a knowledge of him. The Lord is out here making one day a thousand years, a thousand years is one day, and that one thousand years being one day is too taxing for Garabum. Sitting around waiting for the rapture to happen and it doesn't happen while being beleaguered on all sides by a, by a fatal, brutal loneliness that people keep on manifesting uh, girthier and girthier copious amounts of it that this individual in question that this individual in question might finally settle y'all have been sending me suicide curses knowing that i'm highly unlikely going to capitulate to them because i haven't as at this date have i mm? it's taken 10 years of me perpetually being pendulumed from life to death life to death life to death in just short very short spaces of time and survived it you have rightly pinpointed me as resilient you have given me that for a badge of honor you have called me strong you have called me that which is evil immovable you know that i am achilles right you know that i've got a heel even though i'm the strongest man in the room frankly i can be struck on a heel you know that like superman albeit being super crazy uh, what, what, what is a super crazy strong i have got kryptonite 
Latseba, Hore Kinali weakness, and I've put it out there and I told you uh, yesterday and I keep saying it, Hore. I don't care whether or not you're monitoring me from here to Timbuktu. Bottom line is the Lord said that if at all you've got something wonderful that I speak to you, say it on the rooftops, eh? Whatever it is that is hidden in secret, say it on the rooftops. So, so I'm not about that business of hiding stuff. We overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So I am very, very transparent with my testimony. I share exactly what it is that the Lord will have me speak, but it is this very transparency that has made you innovate brand spanking new ways to sin. It is this very transparency that has made you innovate around what I say. And I am not about, and I said that yesterday, I'm not about to go and conceal exactly what it is that I say, all that which I come and I breathe out here, however frequently I may come. Mm. I'm not about to go and alter it. I'm not about to go and mask it. I'm not about to go and put concealer on it that you might not know what I'm doing tomorrow or you might not know what it is that I am saying or what I'm being told in secret places that you might not know and so therefore plot and scheme against it i'm not gonna then shut up and be mum why because the law said that if i tell you something in secret speak it on the rooftops and i spoke again day before yesterday because i keep repeating myself time and time again that a lot of times wicked men and women when you come here and you speak certain stuff they then go to the drawing board roll up their sleeves and try to disprove a prophecy but that their very act of attempting to disprove prophecy by antagonizing the potential for it to come to pass yeah uh, it's the very thing that fulfills it it's the very thing that fulfills it i've been speaking things on a rooftop and so now you're trying to uh, kill me you're trying to make me settle blah blah all that jazz so that that which i spoke does not come to pass but the very thing that you do to try and block that prophecy from coming to pass is the very thing that is going to bring that prophecy to pass like for instance there's a whole bunch of very agitated women that can't stand the fact that i keep saying time and time again that they're going to transcribe my content they're going to transcribe the portions of my videos where it is that i'm speaking in zulu Dwana, basically in my home languages they are going to transcribe them to english that english might be transcribed into portuguese and french etc across the planet because i'm going to be that prolific upon speaking stuff of that nature women then gnash their teeth they get irritated at the prospect of being my employees as typists they get irritated by the fact that I said these things and so now they plot and scheme. They went to the drawing board to in and of themselves try to kill me. I warn them that you're facing death if you try to kill me. Then they, as women, stayed themselves from continuing to try to kill me. But they did not, however, stay themselves from trying to get me to settle. So I've been dealing with a barrage of cray-cray women. Out here trying to make me settle at what by any means necessary. And then there are the plotters and the schemers of men. Who want me gangani the guy that i spoke about one month like the one that i called a dot and the reason i called him dot was because the lord showed me that his manhood is not even sufficient okay proper he got exposed guy his manhood since enough foster that manja guy is still insistent upon me he wants me high and low he's got three baby mamas and he wants me anyway do you understand telling himself that i'm gonna get this so him and a whole bunch of other men like him in the occult have been and you know the strange thing about manja is that he was prophesied to essentially be humiliated and offended, but he was not predicted to die. Because he was not, there are many men who the Lord has basically been telling me are going to die. They're going to pass away, car accidents, etc. The dude who's 21 years older than me, I got shown a vision that he's going to jump off a building. Uh, his own terrace at home uh, to his death without even thinking there are men who have been predicted to perish do you understand what i'm saying but there are others yet who not so much perish but just generally judged um uh, in the sense that they're gonna be human like the guy was just humiliated first and foremost by his own by his issues being exposed but there are alternative judgments being given others because there's got to be people that are alive to endure the wrath of god in the tribulation and that's going to be their punishment so god will keep them thriving and going it is the ones that god is going to keep thriving and going so he can finish them off in the tribulation that keep on going back to the drawing board plotting and scheming insisting forcing things and innovating brand spanking new ways to sin the ones that have not been prophesied to pass away are the ones that are bold face it Precisely because they're supposed to stay dumb. The Lord has handed them over to a reprobate mind. These plots and these schemes, these men have made an observation that if at all they continue in this fashion, that maybe just maybe potentially because I am scared to die, they might work. There's plots and their plots and their schemes that imagine that maybe one day they might get what they want out of me. I kid you not, I am not lying. The past couple of days, perhaps four to five, I have been back to back endured through suicide curses that are concentrated, like literally back to back, almost like daily, literally based on the observation or the hearing of 
what I said in one of my other videos that the video that I shared in communicating to you how a suicide spell works how it is that a person will suddenly suddenly want to die but I also spoke about how it is that as Christians we resist the devil and he flees from us they also made an observation of the fact that within 24 hours I recover and no matter how much the witchcraft um is in operation no matter how many of them there may be no matter how, even if there's like a million of them in just 24 hours I conquer and I overwhelm so knowing that all I need to do is pray and within 24 hours I'm good knowing that all I need to do is hold fast and within 24 hours I'm good knowing that ish, I can't stand the eavesdropping but it is too hot for me to uh, close my door I'm speaking something too sensitive for anybody to be overhearing me right now I've just got people that are walking up and down but let's just carry on talking knowing that that I, I bounce back because no matter how many of them may gather against me in one sitting and no matter what dosage of witchcraft they harass me with no matter what heap of rubble they may put me under one night's prayer overwhelms their dirt and sometimes for a very long amount of time in the sense that i will be in a conquered overcoming state for the next couple of days for the next couple of days before i am yet again thrown or swung like a pendulum from left to right uh by by death curses so now i have been targeted by amadota men do you understand i prefer to have the door open and yet all of this eavesdropping yambora i like it when the light is coming in that way anyway there are men okay yeah see guys these plots these schemes these machinations i just i can't there are men who have literally for the past two three to four days i've been hearing this particular sentiment she can't kill herself she's scared to kill herself she can't take herself to heaven she can't take herself out that now is their strategy so they first started plotting and scheming against me to end my life but then they made an observation that because i'm a christian unlike the rest of the world who when they endure these kinds of satanic suicide spells they just jump all of a sudden they take a noose so they, they tie up a tie and they just hang themselves they grab booster cables and they hang themselves they drink bleach very suddenly so they, they can just suddenly die like suddenly die christians are not hasty one of the fruit of the holy spirit is patience another is long suffering so we endure evil patiently that which is that strong sense of foreboding that which is that exquisite melancholy macabre that which is that sorrow that is yanking at your chains making it very hard for you to enjoy anything that which makes you inconsolable and so therefore knocks people into eternity ever so suddenly we ride it out we endure evil patiently with long suffering we pray until we pierce out into the other side we pray without ceasing we conquer we enter into a spiritual battlefield until the dust settles and they think that they can mock a holy god who enables dust to settle in the climate of a person that's always praying we're given weapons that enable us to settle dust we are enabled to be sober in the midst of calamity because we settle dust making an observation of the fact that dust eventually settles but dust nonetheless comes now the dust is the strategy now perpetual frustration using dust is the strategy the strategy is no longer so much that we would actually die that i as garabo this is the plot against me the strategy is no longer that i should die per se hence why i keep on really oh guys like y'all i am freaking traumatized not only that just violently disgusted by the persistent energy of men who say i'm gonna marry you eventually and there's just so many of them that i don't even know i miss them who among them think that they're finally gonna get this thing done but that's just the thing about very uh, about um head honcho leading type occult organizations sometimes they don't care that there are minions on the ground competing for the hand of one woman that is christian they don't care that they should fight each other unto death they don't care that they should battle one another loggerheading they don't care 
They only care that the person that they're fighting to get finally capitulates. Their target here is the Christian. So there are prolific satanic organizations that don't care that there are like 50 men out here trying to marry one woman. For them, it's whichever men, literally they have gone on and told these satanic men, including one who's got a small little manhood. They've gone on right ahead and told them, may the best, may the best man win. They have told my ex-boyfriend, may the best man win. Recently, I had my ex-boyfriend coming at me with these spells. They have told the guy with the, 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 the absent manhood, may the best best man win they've told the guy that's gay prefers men but nonetheless wants to marry me they've told him may the best man win like all these men that are all vying for the same attention the guy in the united states of america they've told him may the best man win they've literally entered men into a cockpit to fight for my hand in marriage the men of which listen to this the men of which time and time again i keep on highlighting this as an issue are prolific satanists okay they love witchcraft if at all i were to end up married to any of them they would probably die at my hands that's the first thing that i said but however should i stay alive anyway uh they would feed me they would give they would basically put stuff in my food they would put stuff in my cookies they would put stuff in my pasta they would constantly sprinkle stuff in my coffee to keep me in a bunch a marriage that is entered into where a person is unsustainable the person will always be a flight risk that's what under heaven i keep on talking about perpetually i'm always speaking about the flight risk that people that are be beleaguered by occult practitioners are they don't care i also keep making mention time and time again of the fact that i'm a daughter and there's actually a video a series of videos that are coming up where i'm repeating myself yet again because i keep repeating my Self, I keep speaking about how it is that men don't necessarily care so much for reciprocity as they care for ownership. For them, if you don't love them back, I've been and in so far as they can put they be the one to say, I got her, I want her. They they hunt us like we're animals in the wilderness. They feel as if they're just like animals in the wilderness, they can just urinate on us and so therefore mark their territory, and that's what makes for a wife. That, that they don't care about reciprocity, they don't care if we don't love them back. So me being disgusted by them, me vomiting in my mouth is of no essence for them. It's about indeed just exactly what the uh, the overarching occult organizations of this country are saying. May the best man win. They are charging me with minions because it is imperative that if the saint does not die at our hands, she has got to be watered down by being unequally yoked with an unbeliever. They are determined to marry me off to some psychopath. They are also determined to proliferate a certain, um, what, do you, what do you call this, a certain... Um, narrative in this country the narrative of which i spoke about in day before yesterday's videos i spoke about some cult in kzn that's out here trying to squelch squelch squash decimate eliminate and make microscopic black women in particular and i say black women largely because the cult is made up of black men and they tend to target black women are after the women do you understand because they want to create a forceful patriarchy given that they are annoyed they're irritated for the life of them with the strength of women and so because they want to maintain the country in a largely patriarchal type state they are handling abafazi through a cult that started in case of n and i spoke about how it is that this cult has chosen which women will be proliferated and i spoke about how it is that because of this cult i kid you not i'm probably going to end up dead if i don't escape south africa because it has even gone so far as to prosper all these years down the line after infiltrating a satanic agenda it has thoroughly prospered to pass or propose a bill in parliament to uh, uh, um to make allowance for second and third and fourth and basically polygamy under the common law never mind just under customary law i spoke about how it is that they're finally getting what they want I then said, Uguti, if this thing is proliferated and God does not take me out of South Africa, I'm probably going to end up dying a suicide death. I'm probably going to end up taking myself out even though I have come here time and time and time and time again and said that I'm not going to die. I don't want to die. And I've also said that, never mind not wanting to die and not actually dying, I have a deep fear that suicides go to hell. I have a deep fear that they are not they display by killing themselves that they were never saved they display this that blah 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 i've got theories and i can't say that they're confirmed or cast in stone or whatever but they have kept me alive for years and yet i am starting to make concessions for even the convictions i have had all of this time that's what i'm trying to get at with people having gotten me to a point where now i am starting to think that maybe just maybe god is okay with me taking myself out with me however nonetheless being maintained in a fear that i'm not going to go and test that they have then gone on right ahead to plot and scheme in their machinations around my fear of suicide they have gone on right ahead to not only plot and scheme around my fear of suicide but my constant recovery from the suicide spells and 
the fact that when they are in operation, however, albeit me ultimately recovering, when they're in operation, I am overwhelmed by macabre. I am overwhelmed by melancholy. There is a despondency within me. I am inconsolable. I am listless. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. They have made an observation that these overwhelm in just 24 hours, no matter how many of them may pile on me. No matter the numbers of them, I conquer these spells within 24 hours and so far as I'm praying all day long because I'm perpetually fasting. So now their new strategy is to bombard me every single waking moment with them. Essentially, we will do a spell today and then another one tomorrow and then another one the next day and then another one the other day to ascertain that I am maintained in a constant state of foreboding that I am maintained in a constant macabre, that I am maintained in a perpetual communication by entities that my funeral is coming, my suicide. My funeral is coming, my suicide. Literally, I keep on getting spoken to by these entities that get to eventually and I'm going to get buried at West Park Cemetery. Every single day, this is a thing. Even on days when I'm healthy of heart and mind, this is ringing because the spells, how they work, is that not only will you be given a very strong sense of sorrow, despondency, despair, and foreboding, but you will also have voices in your head, literally entities speaking to you saying, your funeral, your funeral, your funeral. You're dying, you're dying. So even when you're just watching a show on Netflix, even when you're just scrolling on something on YouTube, even when you're just sitting, when you're just making coffee, you will literally keep on being communicated to that your suicide is inevitable. Crank out, I don't understand what is going on. You will get communicated to that your suicide is an inevitability. You, you can be okay, but your, your mood will flatten because the thing that is threatening your life is not gone. By Julie they will just bombard me with this suicide spell until I do one of two things because either way, they win. Because I'm scared of death, I will either accommodate a wicked man or I will kill myself. They are gunning for either of these extremes. They're gunning for either my death or my compromise. I keep seeing myself time and time again. Holding hands like a couple with one of these satanic men. I keep getting visions of a suitcase of mine finally being dropped on the kitchen floor of one of these men with them closing the door behind them and me walking in because now i'm a wife of one of them they're always wearing the tops top hats magician hats in my dream like i told you that these men look the exact same in my dreams they look like the way that my grandfather used to look the way that apartheid men used to look brown drabby jackets coats top hats, the dops, they represent a generational curse, the proliferation of it. They are innovating new ways to sin and I keep getting dreams of me holding hands with one such man or one or and it just keeps happening. Every time I close my eyes, I see a vision of me holding hands, basically just taking it in my stride, accepting or legacy or a cemetery. Either way, they win either way they handle me there is this chick on tiktok that does um content right it's it's actually quite funny but it's not anymore because of the fact that god is using that tiktok to explain to me how these men are this young woman basically makes these funny tiktoks with this Macabre music playing in the background. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. That music is just going and going. And this chick is always in slow motion in these TikToks of hers. She's put a filter on her face, and she's constantly getting dumped by her boyfriend. And the boyfriend would then say stuff like, "Uh, there's no electricity. There's no fire anymore in the relationship." And then this chick would offer this guy in slow motion a, 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 a torch and, and, and like a lighter and switch it on on some here's fire and the guy would be like i'm sick and tired of you i'm tired of you 
and then and no, the, the, yeah i'm tired of you then the chick would show um, beds would go to a store where there's a lot of beds like a bed shop where they sell beds and then she would be like here are all these beds you can sleep on them he would say i can't stand you and then she would show him a lazy boy chair and say here's a chair you can sit down since you can't stand me uh and then the guy would be like i i can't um i'm sick again it's time for us to break up this one was actually quite macabre and then she goes she went to a cemetery for that one and then showed him headstones basically all over the show saying that you will leave here only the only way that you and i are breaking up is if you're in a grave is if you're in a grave but she just keeps doing these tiktoks there's a lot of them i like a lot um we don't there's no spark in our relationship anymore and then she would go to like a like a, she will uh, like switch on the light or something and say here's a spark here's electricity there is no um i don't think you see me there no sorry I, I don't there is no security in this relationship and then she goes to a store where they sell security equipment like so, like cameras and um all different kinds of surveilling artifacts and she would be like here's security in the relationship basically she's a woman that's like no you're not leaving we're staying together that's what's good I, I, she's done a lot of these videos like a lot of them with this like music in the background and her being in slow motion with her having also this filter and initially i enjoyed those uh videos because they were funny it's very comedic right it's on some my goodness girl Wahesha. but when then god started using her tiktoks to describe to me how these men are that chick is joking of course that was that's satire what she's doing is jokes it's entertainment she's not that clingy when when however the lord showed me those that chick's videos but with it being one of these men any of these men with me saying i can't stand you i can't ew you gross me out you're into witchcraft and then these guys then going back to the drawing board to essentially correct that which i can't stand above them and fix it you know my heart just is sank so much for me to see that chick's tiktoks as a vision one of them i saw a dude getting baptized at a river and then coming and showing me the certificate of baptism saying see i'm born again let's be together still incredibly said like just a wicked man the other day most that day like um i had a, a, a dream where i saw what looked like it could be like a five-year-old girl five to six-year-old little girl next to this man and you know how i walk up and down the street right this man literally went and grabbed his five-year-old daughter in my dream because i keep saying i don't want a guy right he went and grabbed his five-year-old kid in my dream and shoved her pushed her into moving traffic to go across the street and hug me like her so she can see that you're really cute and that really it's going to be beneficial for her to be your stepmom and he threw his daughter into traffic so that this daughter of his could come to me and hug me when i was outside out here recording a video i immediately i looked because whoa this dude is endangering his kid and then the kid instead of running into traffic she ran back to her dad and hugged him mom mandong on some daddy why are you doing this to me essentially she boomeranged back to the dad on some why are you throwing me to that woman worse why are you throwing me into traffic so i can go and hug that woman essentially these men will even cast spells on their freaking children just to accommodate a woman they want to make either a nyazi kankani or a second wife or um, a wife or a wife indeed mara ana le bana ba 2 by 3 ke ha ang la selaka ngwana ha ya o nang le 5 or 6 and the daughter got scared out of her mind because her dad threw her into moving traffic to come and hug me until the daughter ran back to the dad on some but why are you throwing me into traffic baka lo ya le bana ba teng they will literally do a ritual involving children just to get what they want that tiktok of that um woman on tiktok that chick that does those funny videos that are no longer funny to me uh yeah i keep on seeing various permutations of them basically 
these guys trying to see if they can make it fit make it fit like tight jeans so i then also keep on hearing jasmine sullivan's song if i could forget him i will please believe me basically me forgetting about jesus christ spells to make me get over christ to move on from jesus because i'm falling in love with a guy i'm falling in love with a guy like men who are forceful with witchcraft magic and there is a cult in this country of a few of them are just saying let the best man win let the one with the best strategy win and man are they not strategizing this here is saint murder do you understand it's 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 christian murder and i keep seeing myself anyway their strategy is to frustrate me with these spells some of whom are saying to themselves Usabugus bulala. she's scared to kill herself so eventually she's gonna take me so their strategy is to endure me through melancholy all day all night and even when i conquer after 24 hours it's still going and going their strategy is to essentially slap me with suicide spells until there is too much depression for me to either keep pushing or stay alive they want to infiltrate suicide curses every single day so that what i overwhelm in 24 hours the next 24 hours i'm gonna have to overwhelm it again just to keep me in a constant macabre and like i said these spells they tend to use whoever is on the ecosystem around to severely frustrate me so i will finally capitulate to either suicide or taking one of these men my mom is wicked she's been wicked pretty much all her life what she has done to me however is a new low and what she's presently doing to me is a new low like this woman is i have nothing to my name i am broke she has just recently been re as uh, um assigned so she basically they called her back on contract to a point of even changing up your bathroom line adjusting she she installed a brand spanking new bathroom and yes she will not even give me money to buy painkillers on my period i told i spoke about that the other day i told you that they will use people who already have got a moral turpitude they've already got a character problem it's already really problematic and then they will just exacerbate it the other day my sister was used Actually, remember i was lamenting Kofiaka. um she also the other day when she summers down then my mom with me having nothing to my name albeit having asked for several favors the splurging imagine somebody going on shopping sprees to show you that they have money and you don't and then making it clear that so okay we had to do what we needed to do to get ahead so we're not against saying sweet goyani please you know the kinds of women who were like I, I have a relative who now today is hiv positive because one of her friends introduced her to an hiv positive guy that she knew was hiv positive and spreading it and didn't tell her and she watched this family member of mine flirt and date and sleep with this guy naya why she didn't use protection i don't know contract hiv while everyone including this friend of my relative knew that this guy is going to give this chick hiv everybody around said nothing but Zeba. this chick that introduced this family member of mine to this monstrous psychopath that is actively spreading the disease knew that he was an active spreader and nonetheless introduced her friend to him without letting her know that if you're gonna flirt with this guy just be forewarned as forearmed he's hiv positive if he does not tell you i've told you so that if you insist on being with him you will know what to do you will know you will basically make your own informed decisions the women in south africa are presently like that they will literally throw their girls look at this cat drinking my water they will literally 
Hey. Anyway, they will literally throw their girls. Crank cat for real? Like, I cannot catch a break. I, I literally can't. I guess we are not drinking that water anymore. I don't care whether you think you're cute or not. We don't drink from the same cistern. That was not your water. The cat and my water. Anyway, there are women who who throw women under the bus like that. Like they will literally introduce you to an HIV positive guy. Or they will introduce you to a guy who whose four former girlfriends all ended up in hospital with broken arms from gender-based violence. And this cute dude smiling at you at a restaurant will be introduced to you by your friend. I'd say about this guy has a violent streak. He has put four women in hospital. There are two rape kits that went missing. Let Doc had to go police station because of him. I have a friend from back in the day. She betrayed me so really. You know, I like to say that when you are, when you are um what do you call this? Well, when you are victimized, how about you stay innocent so you can actually earn justice? So that when people are rioting in the streets fighting against the thing that hurt you, you can um you can claim under that policy. You can claim protections under it. But when you make yourself a perpetrator after being victimized, you relinquish rights to find to, to wear protection essentially. My phone is unstable, so I'm sorry about that. You relinquish rights to protection under recourse when it comes. When justice finally comes, you don't get to claim damages under it. Because you were victimized. Because you are a victimizer. This chick was victimized. But then she became a victimizer later on. So now she doesn't count. Now she cannot win protections under the recourse that God will award. Those women who have been suffering under gender-based violence. You don't get to lament that men are trash. And they keep on slapping you silly and scratching you. And marrying you by force. by Jesa. And then afterwards you throw a woman under the bus. You then go and you grab a woman. And you put her underneath a man that's HIV positive. Insisting that all of us contract HIV. Because I'm a total subsung. There are stories also doing their rounds on TikTok. There is a uh, one of a woman who fed her baby's cousin HIV positive blood and an open cut on the baby's skin. She went and put her own blood on it. What? Kulisa made sick. Leseya. Kangulas. Because her cheating husband gave her HIV. She was a victim until she stopped being one. Being one. She was a victim until she stopped being one. Because the moment you decide to perpetrate because you were victimized. That's when you lose, like I said, all rights to recourse. That's when you lose all rights under ju justice in, to get your own piece of the pie for damages. You literally take away your own recovered piece, women. So this friend of mine, she got raped by, listen to this, one of the dearest, closest friends of her friend's boyfriend. Like imagine dating a guy for five years. And then he introduces you to his boy when you are all hanging out. And then this guy, you hang out with him because you trust him. You trust your, your, your friend's friend. You trust your, your friend's man. Sorry, you trust your friend and you've known your friend's man for five years. The, the couple, the two of them, you've known them for a minute. When this guy introduces you to this friend of his, when then he ends up raping you. Are you going to tell me that there was nothing at all of a warning that could have been given by this guy or his girlfriend? That law, be careful, because really guys who rape women have raped women. Indota does not just go on a date and have your body in Ghana. He does not just pin himself on you on the passenger seat in a parking lot. And just have a field day with you on a first or a second or a third date when he hasn't done that five other times before. Only reputation no mundo. A man who has raped, who rapes a woman, tends to have raped before. And in Dota, Baba Fazi, there will be rumors spreading in the Gassi about that rape, whether or not he ends up in prison for it. And his boys will tend to know. His boys will know Utilo, Utata, whatever he wants. He just takes what he wants and goes. He will be known. 
So why under heaven did this guy whose boy was into rape, why did he not warn my friend that Oscar Bloma only won Letemba? Because he has a reputation for taking what he wants like us. See, that guy had to have known. Also, the girlfriend, given that she was with that man for as many years as she was with him, she tended to hang out with the friends of this guy. Listen, y'all. We're seeking South Africa. I have been in recreational relationships before. And I've jollied for years with guys before. The longest relationship that I was in was five years long. And... I will tell you right now that Arangani by my ex-boyfriend Bonke Mengbas, I knew them and their rap sheets. I knew them and their crazy little rap sheets. guys. I knew my man's boys. I knew what they were into, what they were likely to do. And I rightly, therefore, always warned my girls when they wanted to be with any of them, if they were worthless. If they were worthless. One of my friends wanted to date the friend of my ex-boyfriend. We were all partying together one night, Rachela, and uh, we ended up going back to hang out at this guy's apartment. My ex, me, my friend, and this dude. My friend stayed the night for whatever reason. They, they, they stayed, I don't know whether or not they slept together or what, but she liked him clearly. She liked him. They, he was a cute dude, we get it, and all that jazz. But on that same night, when she was, if anything, she kept, she said, like, when we were still hanging out at the restaurant, Rajaiva and everything, I was like, you like this guy? Okay, you get to like a guy. It's your prerogative, girl. It's your, it's your thing. Mara, you must understand that this dude will never take you seriously. You are going to be a one-hit wonder, Otofeta. And not a one-hit wonder. You might last for maybe three or four months because his girlfriend's always last for three or four months and then he's on to the next one. You are going to wash his dishes. You are going to come back home from work and sleep there and go to work from his place for three to four months because his girlfriend's last three to four months. Oh, busy this guy. No woman stays. And they get by my friend. Oh, but something stable. You want something like what I got with this dude? We've been together for years. You, you, you are always single. You are like you are always going on dates, and guys are so disappointing that you don't either go to second dates or you um. Next week, there's like some other dude because she was always just trying to get into a relationship that is stable, but nothing ever gave. As at the time that we were now having this conversation, I was like, you want something that's going to linger. You want a guy that's going to introduce you to parents and everything, right? You want a stable relationship. She was two years younger than me, born 19, um, no, she, she, 1986. She was uh, 1986. So she was at that stage i could have been like what 25 so she was like 23 she was young enough to like not have to settle like even in the slightest and i told her i was like you get to like him papa you you know you're two adults we were lost in the world and all that jazz so it was during the time when if a woman wanted to go and have a one night stand it was like girl just make sure you're protected you don't be Aja telling her like barely ever anybody give giving warnings of um fornication like on some girl, you're going to be looked at as a threat mate or whatever because the sexual revolution had taken us over and we were all a bunch of immoral randos that out here be saying ain't nobody supposed to be judging a woman that's sleeping around all over the show. So this friend of mine, when she was busy flirting and chatting and whatnoting with this friend of my exes, I told her before we even went to his place to hang out, before we even went to finish the night go his place to hang out, I told her, Hore, this dude is hectic. Chances are right now, there is somebody that he is with that is always cleaning his house because he would literally have little domestic servants for girlfriends for three months at a time. And then he would move on to the next one. I can't really say that he cheated on them, but he certainly changed them like underwear. So he would basically stay faithful to one girl for three months and then move on to another girl for another three months, another girl for another. He could like, like this dude was unstable and the strange thing is he was the friend of my ex that had a crush on me that felt like he wishes he had met me first because he lived in my neighborhood telling himself why didn't i meet her first i'm glad you didn't meet me first because now i'm in so about four months and then you are going to move on i was going to come in your apartment out here be making pop and then next thing 
at the and then we were gonna dump each other and then there's gonna like proper there was a woman that came into his life that we thought this is it now this is it and even that lasted five months five months like just an unstable dude and i told my friend one more if you like this guy if you're cool with this way that he is then you're a grown woman you get to do what you want sister again she came back we all went back and when we were leaving i was gonna get, give her a ride home i had my own car at the time she was yet to get her own vehicle i was gonna drive her home and then my ex and i were gonna go to my apartment okay i was yeah i was the responsible friend that was gonna be driving my girl all the way home because we all traveled Gaufela. if anything i think she we were out dancing 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 and then she called on some kind of where are you i was like go, go, so, so, so. and then she came and joined us i was going to drop her off at home when it was time to go i was like girl what's going on Ratamaya? and she made a decision to stay and said that he said that he'll drop me off at home and i didn't doubt that he would drop her off at home because he was not the kind of guy to leave a woman out on a limb um throwing her out of the apartment or whatever but he was also not the kind of guy to be out just dropping a woman off at home without getting something from her so i don't know if they slept together or what she never said that they did but the way that she acted the next day and the days thereafter coming told me that this woman was expecting something big from this dude and he just never gave it to her we left her there the two of them stayed whole together next day not next day but basically the next week she was like oh i like him please talk to him for me please talk to him for me i was like girl but i told you this guy was wrong i told you i was like but anyway if you're trying to get a favor in with this guy he's not my friend he's my ex's friend so talk to my ex she then called my ex on some uh boyfriend of carabo please hook me up with your boy what's going on over there get her my ex-boyfriend Anfonela on some babe um yo your girl wants uh, tamba let's say his name was tamba she was like yo your girl wants tamba and i mean like yes like you know how temba is i don't even know what to do she really likes him about like a temba for her and i was like well why don't you type thing maybe maybe this time around temba because i knew my friend right um she was good peoples and i would i imagine she would have made for a really great girlfriend so i was like maybe this time around she was she might be erect she could settle in like she could be the kind of woman that temba will stay with because this time this is it type setup thing you know sometimes dudes can play around for a minute and then next thing it's going one year two years three years and you're like ha huh? he's chilling yeah i thought maybe my girl could be that thing because i thought she was awesome so i i imagine that why not right why wouldn't temba make an honest woman out of her i my friend not my friend my boyfriend was like sham your friend keeps calling me and like she the first time she called him wang jail then and then she kept calling him on some so what does he say and my boyfriend would come to me on some sham i feel bad for your friend because she keeps calling me asking me to hook her up with your with my boy and then like he either wants it or doesn't want it he either wants it so i think what happened is that temba hit it and then quit it i think it was a one night stand he hit it and quit it and did not even make her a three month or a four month she got so heartbroken and she so wanted him that for the life of her it, it, it like it basically we had to rip her from the even prospect of being with this guy she never got to be with him Marana like no man's business she was just filling herself some temba but you see the thing there is she was forewarned she was forewarned i told her that used to be the what friendship was like yeah and this chick with the temba situation is not the only one that i have warned about a guy I've had many friends that I would just be having crushes on the friends of my boyfriend and I would be like ah yo Lana he's got three a week so if you want girl cool do you but in spite of knowing already Cho meets up my ex-boyfriend Babang Baba of them Bajwang in spite of me knowing how my ex's friends were some of them there were others who also knew these guys that I was yet to know were Firiaing any of my girls that let them there was one girl guys you know at this the situation is just dire there was this one really gorgeous chick that we used to hang out with and on one birthday can't remember whose birthday it was maybe my cousins this dude rocks up hey ning and johnny blah blah and we're there at a table all of us guys and girls having a nice time and this dude rocks up sits down and then this chick was gorgeous like easy for anybody to be like who that is and he said that to my cousin 
who that is and my cousin was like that's lerato let's say her name was lerato uh, introduce introduce cousin introduces this is uh so, 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 this is lerato cousin says nothing we're here exchange numbers chick we take her own home and everything literally there was 48 hours or 24 at least for my cousin to be like <coughs> okay so go ahead and we were all drunk last night and so we were not concentrating but now that we are concentrating uh listen the guys will see so that you are trying to get with has got like a good five girls in any given week and some of them are colleagues and some of them he smashes right in his car go parking not to go officing i just wanted you to understand what kind of a dude he is so that if you insist on going out like that girl now you're, you're highly likely going to end up a one night stand you are highly likely going to end up a one night stand highly likely because how for years we've been hanging out with this dude and he's never brought a medi home we don't know any main chick there's always different girls so if you want to be the brand spanking new underwear on his buttock it's okay you're a grown woman do what you want to do but know that that's what you're gonna be disposable panties well tranka. my cousin had 24 to 48 hours to let this girl know because this girl called my cousin the next day on some yo 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 uspusiso called me he says he likes me he wants to take me out blah 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 and my cousin was like oh have fun girl enjoy it what the heck so much competition literally i was in the blind i was in the dark i did not know this all i know is that one week later one week later this chick was crying one week later she was like he didn't call me why didn't he call me he took her out one night did a one night stand because he was able to succeed to just sleep with women in one night and this chick never got a call again never heard from him again she was so beautiful this woman you know men when they're like how in the world do you just let somebody that fly go like she was so pretty but this dude just hit it and quit it he hit it and quit it but he was a hitter and a quitter and we all knew it this was not surprising but my cousin was here Basari Bajwalo. we are living not all, all of them we are living in an era do you understand what i'm saying